this blessing of the third year of the I would like to pray for our sister's co-worker, Isabella, who's uh, trying to better herself and come off of these uh, hills, Father God. We ask that you be with her and bless her and um, give her the strength to, to uh, be able to live her daily life without them and pray that she um, find strength in you and in your love and is able to let all that go. I would also like to lift up our sister Joyce's mom. Uh, just pray for her health and her memory and all of the physical um, issues that she's going through. Father God, I just pray that she's healed and that our sister brings some light to her situation, Father God. Um, when our bodies are changing uh, for whatever reason, it's a hard thing to accept and to uh, so live with sometimes. We just pray for her and ask for strength. We'd also like to pray for our brother Adrian's sister uh, who tested positive for COVID. Father God, we just ask that the, the struggles that she's facing right now with breathing and um, anything else that only you may know about, Father God, truly what she's feeling, we just pray for her and ask for strength and uh, comfort and, and healing over her. We'd also like to pray for, uh, <laughs> just over everything, Father God. Uh, you know what prayers are often that need to be answered, and you know what's on our hearts. Uh, some of us may not be talking about them, but you do know what's happening. Uh, so we just ask for prayer and healing and uh, Keep us all safe throughout the week. We pray for blessings and uh, we know that there are some things in life that we may not get when we want them, but you, in your time, we know it's all happening in your time. We pray this on Jesus. Amen. Oh. 
Oh, what a blessing it is to be here with you guys on Wednesday night. Amen? Amen. Amen. I got a lot of cadence going on. Did you know how to do this? You know how to turn the cadence down on it? It's a little nozzle on the top. We got a couple more weeks, so it's all right. What's up, Tita? Huh? Oh, you know what? I'm, I'm glad you reminded me. I, I don't know if you guys noticed, but Sister T had to leave quite quickly. We have no idea what's happening. But we, we know by the look on her face and what was going on, it's, it's something serious. 
So thank you for reminding me. Let's let's lift up Sister T and her family up in prayer. Oh, no, I just oh. you. Lord Jesus. Lord, uh, again, thank you for for being so patient with me and patient with us, Lord, and, and, and reminding us who to pray for and what to pray for, Lord. Lord, right now we lift up our sister Tina to you, Lord, and, and all our granddaughters and grandsons and our sons and daughters, Lord. Lord, we don't we don't know what 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 pertains to why she had to leave so sudden and so soon, Lord. But we we, we ask that wherever she is going, whatever she is doing, Lord, that you are with her, that you protect her, that you protect this family, Lord, that your hand be on them, Lord. Lord, that you come alongside them and be with them and, and whatever is going on, Lord, and that, that you let them know that we are with them, that you are with them, and that we love them, Lord. Lord, we pray all these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we've been going through the Sermon on the Mount. And, and in chapter 5, we learned what it was like to be citizens of the kingdom. We, we, we saw the characteristics we should have in the Beatitudes, we saw what kind of influence we should have on the world we live in. We, 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 we got to hear about the righteousness of the kingdom and how it harmonizes not only with the Old Testament, but how it exceeds the righteousness of the scribes, the Pharisees, how we should have our relationship not only to God, but how we should have a relationship with our fellow man. And now, as we're getting ready to enter into verse 13 of chapter 7, we're going to see the exhortation to enter the kingdom of heaven. The, 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 now the decision. Because that, that was the whole sermon on the Mount of God. That's what almost any sermon I pray uh, establishes as a decision at the end of it where am I going to make a choice to make Jesus Christ the master of my life? Am I going to ask for forgiveness? Am I going to decide to change my life and who I follow? And am I going to follow Christ for the rest of it? And Jesus, he, he, he starts it off here in chapter 7 we with, uh, what, what was it? Do not judge others, right? And then we, we, we talked about how, how we shouldn't be judging others. How we should take care of the, what, the plank in our eye before we worry about our neighbor's speck in his. And then, and then he also reminded us, but as much as you want to do that, don't, don't throw pearls to pigs. Right? Don't, don't give... Don't give holy things to dogs. What he's saying is, oh, they're not going to want it. There's someone else who needs it, who is craving it. And then last week we talked about effective prayer and also what the golden rule and how to establish that in our lives. But now we're going to talk about the road less traveled. That's why I titled the message for today. Because as much as we wish that it wasn't true, but the, the truth of the matter is, more people are going to go down the broad road than the narrow road. Jesus puts it like this, the narrow and the wide gate. He says, enter through, actually, somebody should read the scripture for me so I don't read it. I haven't had you come up here for a minute. She's not going to cook enchiladas. He wants to come and read the scripture. Yeah. <laughs> it's only two verses this time. <laughs> he gets nervous, so it's very crazy. Enchiladas. Yeah. Okay, so Matthew chapter 7. 13, right? 13 to 14? Yep. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road broad that leads to destruction. And there are many who go through it. How narrow is the gate and difficult the road that leads to life in few hands. Oh, thank you. See? I got it. Oh, yeah. It's really cool. You know, like we, we drove a raised roof because we, cause we, we found that narrow road. But I don't know about you guys, but for me, that was a hard that was a hard gate for a fine. You know, it didn't matter how many people were pointing it out. There were people saying, dude, the gate's right there. And I was too preoccupied on this road to destruction. I was, I was too caught up in being with the crowd. I didn't want to go to church. I wanted to go to the club. I mean, both had music. What was the difference, right? <laughs> you know, I, you know I, I was like, oh, well, you do your thing. I'm going to do my thing. I never had uncles with greatest attention saying, Mike, you need Jesus. And I'm like, you need to chill out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you don't know me. You don't, don't control my life. And in hindsight, man, what a, what a blessing it would have been if I would have listened when I had that chance. I would have saved myself a bunch of heartbreak, a bunch of messes I made, a bunch of situations. But like, even though 
it was hard to find. It wasn't hard to find because it says asking you or seeking you shall find, right? God's saying, like, I'm right there. You just got your eyes shut. Like, I mean, literally, like, it's not that hard to find them, but we are so, like, caught up in everything else that it's almost impossible because we're, we're looking at everything else. That, that's the hard part. We, 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 we see, we see the, the temptations of this world, and that's what they're, the, you know, temptation is tempting. Uh, you know what I mean? It's, you see everybody going that way, it's kind of hard to go the other way. And then Jesus looks right at everybody and says, enter the narrow gate. I don't, I don't know about you guys, but I'm a chubby guy. I'm going to work on that. I see, bro, I see Brother Adrian, he's all yoked out, all in shape. I'm like, man, I should get the gym. But this is jolly way. I was getting. <laughs> I was happy. No. But but like, but you know, like I, I see something difficult. I want to go the easy route. I don't know about you guys. Would you rather go uphill or downhill? I, I'm kind of a downhill kind of guy. You know what I mean? I'm gonna be like, I could go this way and sweat, or hey, I could coast. You know, I, and, and Jesus, he knows our hearts, and he knows the hearts of those that are listening to him and his disciples. And he lets them know. He looks right at him. He says. You guys enter through the narrow gate. For the gate is wide and the road broad that leads to destruction. And there are many who go through it. He is another way of saying, you see everybody going that way, you go the other way. Don't, 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 don't follow the crowd. You know, there's an actual term. It's called mob mentality. It's a real thing. People follow the mob. They, they follow when, when, when emotions are high and everything's going on. People are tend to just kind of jump in line and go. That's why I love Christianity, because Christianity appeals to want us to be critical thinkers. You gotta think before you do. I, I don't know about you guys. Like I have those um, I call them old mic moments. Where that that old mic just pops in. I think he, he lies dormant for so long, and then all of a sudden, here he is yelling at his neighbor. Turn that music down. I haven't done that yet. I just moved to my house. I hope that's not the case. Really nice couple we live by. But you, you know what I mean? Like, pounding on the door. What were you thinking? And then, it's like, you know, Jesus is like, what do you think? Why are you pounding on the door? You know, like, what's going on? You're like, we got to think. And he says, man, it's easy to get caught up in the moment and just follow the crowd. But I'm asking you guys to be different. He's looking at the disciples asking them, but he's looking at us 2,000 years later saying, Christian, be different. If you see the world going that way, you've got to go the other way. Because you've got to, what, keep your eyes on the kingdom of heaven and all things will be added unto you. We keep our gaze on him. And we can stay away from sin. But the problem is, is what, what is it? Is everybody, everybody's going that way. It, 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 it's tempting. You know, like, look at that crowd going towards the broad. Why? Because, I, I don't know about you, but I, I like I'm, I'm, a, what is those, I'm an extrovert. I, I like to be around a group. I, I can't handle being by myself. Like, like uh, the school's on a summer vacation. So this building is pretty quiet. So I go bother Ethel for like an hour out of the day. <laughs> hey, Ethel, what you doing? So I'm working. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Come sit here and talk to you. <laughs> Ain't you supposed to be working? My, I, I, Ethel, this is my job. Just <laughs> Come bother you, make sure you're all right. But you know, but like, I, 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 I feed off of people's energy. So that's tough for me when Jesus is saying, man, when all your friends are going to the club on Saturday, my, I need you to go to bed early because you need to be somewhere on Sunday. That was tough for me. But when, when, when my cousin, you know, like, hey man, I just got this blood, we're going to go smoke it, what are you doing? And I'm like, no man, I'm, I'm trying to live a better life. That was tough. But you know what? Now, I, I can't help but just go down this thing. I'm already, I'm already in it. Now, now I can't see it another way. I, I can't vision my Wednesdays being any different but hanging out with you guys. I can't see Sunday morning without going to church. Even though church is it's tough to get here sometimes. I ain't gonna lie. I'm a baby screaming, diapers dirty. You know, like, it's, it's, it's like headed. I, get to, I sneak out early because now that's my job. So I'm like, baby, handle that. I'm gonna go to work. <laughs> but you know, like it's, it, it's a real thing. It's, it's that narrow gate is hard to find. But once you get on that narrow road, Man, it's the most blessed traveling experience you ever have. I mean, it seems like it seems like more people lean towards easiness, but but it's also just the the, the what, is, what would you call that the 
comfort of it. You know, like, it, it, you don't know no different. Like, it's, it's hard. Like, I, I've, I've talked to so many people that says, man, I, I want to stop smoking weed, Mike, but you know what? I don't know how I would. It's, it's part of my life. You know, I, I want to stop doing this, but this, this is who I am. And it's so sad because, I mean, they, they, they believe that to be true. But, but I, I want to tell you is, God says that's not who you were supposed to be. He said, you're supposed to be mine. And then I'll give you what you need. I will provide all the things that you feel like you're missing out on. That's why he says, don't get drunk off of wine, but get drunk off of the spirit. He's saying, you know what? You think you need this, but it's just, it's just an illusion. And two times too many, I've been stuck in that illusion where I'm just like following something that's going to leave me empty. And you know what? I, I, I tell you, Wholeheartedly, when I found out, if you could get filled on the Holy Spirit, you'll never be filled empty again. He'll just keep overflowing it. He'll just keep giving you more and more. In Luke 13, 23, it's, it, he says it the same way, but in a different way, right? He's saying the same thing. He says, after saying, hey, I want you guys not to be like this, not to go like that. So somebody comes to the Lord, and one of the disciples says, Lord, someone asks, him are only a few people going to be saved? Because I mean that, that's a that's a big statement, right? Only only never get more more fraud is the path of destruction. It's like you're saying all those people are going to destruction and only one or two of them are gonna find the narrow gate. Have you guys ever heard the parable about the sowers? I don't know if you guys are a numbers person, but three out of those four don't make it. That's a horrific stat. I, I don't know what you guys that that's, that's 25 out of 100. You know, you know what I mean? Like I, that's 250 out of 1,000. I mean, you, you, you do the math, right? Like, I, I don't like those numbers. I, I, those numbers, those, those break my heart. And, 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 and that's why somebody broke this guy's heart. He says, Lord, are you telling me only a few? Like, you, I, you can almost hear the heartbreak in his voice. Like, and I, that can't be right. You're telling me only a few? And, and, and Jesus said to them, he said to them, make every effort to enter through the narrow door because I tell you, many will try to enter and won't be able. Once the homeowner gets up and shuts the door, then you will stand outside and knock on the door saying, Lord, open up for us. He will answer you, I don't know you or where you're from. Then you will say, we ate and drank in your presence, and you talk in our streets. But he will say, I tell you, I don't know you or where you're from. Get away from me, all you evil doers. Like I said, that is, those are, those are, those are the scriptures I wish I didn't have to read, but, but, but they're, they're the scriptures that need to be read. Because I, I would be doing a disservice if I came up here on a pulpit and it was just like, everything's hunky-dory, don't worry about it. That person will find a way. And, and I, like, I don't know who this quote came from, but it says, A man may go to heaven without health, without riches, without honors, without learning, without friends, but he can never go there with what? Without Christ. Without Christ. Because that's what that that's what the homeowner is saying, right? That's Jesus is the homeowner. He's the one letting you in. And he's saying, man, you did all those things. You made all that effort, but you didn't do it for me. You did it for yourself. You, you didn't do it for the glory of God. You did it only for your own glory. So I never knew. You never had a relationship with me. And, and, like, and like I said, that's. That's what Jesus is saying. He said, what's your decision on the Sermon on the Mount? He said, what's your decision? Are you going to follow me? Or are you going to follow your religion? Are you going to follow your money? Are you going to follow your, your habits, your, your life? You know what I mean? Like anything that will get in the way of God is taking the place of God. And Jesus is saying, guys, you need to not be like the crowd. You need to go the other way. You need to go for the narrow gate, not the broad one. You need to make sure you have me and nothing else. Why do, why do we need Jesus? Because he is what? The way, the truth, and the life. And what? No one comes to the Father except 
through me, he said. So it's only through him that we get to go to heaven. I thought this picture was awesome. I don't know if you guys can see it, but you see that you see the road of religion and only one way to God. And, you, know, you guys can read it, but this is a good little picture, right? I told you to ask for directions, and, I, and what did the guy say? Of course, they had to make the guy say it, right? And, but I thought all roads lead to God. I, you know, I, I, I've studied a lot about other religions, and, and all religions are generally about the same until we get to Jesus. Because Christianity, Jesus, that's where he, he turns it all, all upside down. He says, nope, not all roads lead to God, only the road through me. Only I could get you there. That's why he says it's, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to go to heaven. He's not saying that it's possible for a camel to get through the needle. He's saying it's impossible for you to ever get to heaven on your own merit or on your own on your own will. He said it's only by my will, it's only by what I do that you get to go to heaven. Because uh, I've, I've done studies on that eye of the camel, and somebody I read a whole study where this guy was like, "Well, there was a gate." There's a couple miles away from the main gate that, you know, if you got your camel, I mean, they really try to explain it, how this could be possible. But what Jesus is just breaking it down, he's saying it is impossible without me, guys. It's impossible, no, no matter how much religion you have, to, to get to heaven without me. But like I said, us as Christians, we don't just do it because it feels good. We, we got we to gotta know the cost of becoming his followers. It says right here, and this is J.C. Ryle. I like this. Count the cost to follow Christ. J.C. Ryle says, it costs something to be a true Christian. Let that never be forgotten. To be a mere nominal Christian and go to church is cheap and easy work. But to hear Christ's voice, follow Christ, believe in Christ, and confess Christ requires much self-denial. It will cost us our sins, our self-righteousness, our ease, and our ruling All must be given up. We must fight an enemy who comes against us with thousands of followers. Our Lord Jesus Christ would have us thoroughly understand this. He bids us count the cost. You know why? Because it's free. Salvation is a free gift to us, but it costed Christ everything. Like, I mean, we, we, we've been talking about it. We've been talking about it all the time. But what Jesus Christ did on that cross for us when he, when he sacrificed his body when he shed his blood that was for me and you that, that, that's, that's something like, like I, I, I pray when the time comes that I'm willing to give my life up for those I love and I think God will help me do that There's no greater friend is that him that would give his own life for another right and, 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 and what did Christ do he did that for us so it would be foolish of us to just think, oh, thanks God. Thanks for your sacrifice. Now I'm going to do what I want. It says instead, no, you, you will count the cost. That means every day you remember what he did so that way you live a better life because you know, man, Jesus did this for me so I can be forgiven. I'm going to show the rest of the world that I deserve to be forgiven. You're going to be your better self, right? We're going to have your new nature. It's, we're going to have our new life. I, I love this. It's in Acts 14.22, it says, after they went around encouraging everyone and telling them this, it says, strengthen your disciples by encouraging them and continuing to continue in the faith and by telling them it is necessary to go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. So there's like in Acts, right? They're, they're starting the church and they're, they're laying hands on people. They're they're, they're Praying, they're putting elders in place and all that stuff. And, and, and it says, like, once they were done, they, 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 their job or what they wanted to do was they wanted to encourage them and remind them that, man, it's going to be hard. It's not going to be easy, Christian. It, it's going to be tough because you're going to want to do the things you used to do. You're going to want to be that old self. You're going to want to go back into the mess that you were once in. But, 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 you, but you keep your eyes on me, you won't do it. If you if you if you fill that time with God, you won't do it. But but it's gonna you're gonna you're gonna have to overcome some things, right? We are overcomers. I look at I look at you guys right here. I know you guys have overcome some things. 
I don't even gotta know if you've overcome, but I can tell this by this the little conversations we've had and shared in the mills that you guys have overcome things that I would never know about, but God does. God knows what you had to overcome, and look at here you are. You're not doing something else. I mean, right now, Stanley Cup Finals, y'all. I'm just saying, I don't know if you guys like that, but I do. But I'd rather be here with you guys. You know what I mean? I, I wouldn't want to miss that for the role. Even if I just got a score right now, hopefully he is. <laughs> I thought that would have been kidding. You know, he got the assist. But but you but you know what I mean? Like it's that's not the hardest thing he's talking about. He's talking about those times when, man, your brother who you used to hang out with all the time, hang out with Man, you remember remember that friend that you he was your ride or die. He was your he was your one, right? Yeah. Now now he's going this way, you're going that way. He's going down that what that broad road, and you're on the narrow road. It's I'm going east on Sixth Avenue. We're going west. We ain't, we can't be in the same car. We can't be in the same ride no more because we're going opposite ways. In First Timothy six eleven, it says, "But you, man of God, you need to put you child of God, you human of God, however you want to do it." Let's talk to you ladies too. But you, man of God, flee from these things. And pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of eternal life to which you were called and about which you have made a good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Amen? Amen. Fight the good fight. Uh, you guys know Rob. Rob's a fighter, but like, I know a bunch of these women. You guys are all fighters. I, I know you guys, you guys uh, you ain't, ain't threw in the towel. But he said, if you're going to fight for some, fight for the things of God. Make that be your business. Make it be, and you know, you know, I like it. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called. Oh, I love that. Take hold. You know, this, that, that, that's the way it's saying, this, this was promised to you. I, I don't know if you ever seen a kid and it was that gift that they always wanted. They, they ain't shy about grabbing it and taking it, right? That's theirs. Like, you got the gift of salvation that was given to you. You can take hold of it. God gave you a gift of salvation, a gift of redemption, a gift of love, and he wants you to grab it, take hold of it. And not only take hold of it, but show the rest of the world that it's yours. That it's yours, and it's yours today. I want to end it with this uh, poem. It's by Deborah Ann Belka. It says, There is only one direction to go, only one road to take. But few will discover the path leading to the narrow gate. It takes a lot of effort to find it, determination to enter through. It takes more than going to church sitting every Sunday in a pew. For why is the road leading to death and destruction, and Satan pays it with worldly greed and seduction? There's only one finish line for us to race towards to win. There's only one goal to have, but heaven not all will enter in. The gate we choose to take will determine our eternal fate. And we must decide if it, if it be wide or the one that is straight. Amen? Amen. If I can have the worship team come up and uh, bless us with some worship time. Uh, I love you guys. You know, Thank you for letting me speak to you guys. Uh, let's sing the song and let's get this to the Lord.
all of these beautiful brothers and sisters who are keeping our eyes fixed on you, focused on your will, always keeping you first place in our life. Uh, thank you. More of you, Jesus, less of us. Thank you for blessing the rest of this night, giving us a safe travel back home. And thank you for bringing us back here on Sunday, ready to worship our faces off. We thank you for all this in the powerful, precious, holy name of the only Savior and the Lord of our lives, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother.